You're listening to the Thoroughbred Podcast, an elite business leadership podcast. Hey guys, welcome again to the Thoroughbred Podcast. Uh, this is going to be a great edition. I'm excited to have Mr. Jeremy Ward from Southern Indiana, which means he's also serving my favorite place next to Michigan, which is Kentucky. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for, for watching, for, for sharing, um, for subscribing and tuning into this. Uh, you know, the, the, the definition of thoroughbred is obviously the racehorse, but then the secondary definition is an elite business person. And uh, that's who we're trying to bring on our elite business uh, people. And along with that, that are just good people also. Uh, and so I welcome Jeremy Ward from Ward Realty Services, which means he is another one of the new independents coming to the market. Welcome. Thank you, John. I appreciate you having us. Uh, you it's been great to, to share business strategies and, and get to know you over the past few years. You know, our businesses are so similar, uh, even though that I'm in Indiana and you're in Michigan. We've had a lot of the same kind of uh, track records and uh, went down the same path. So thanks for having me on, and I'm excited to, to talk with you today. Yeah, most definitely. And, you know, I, I just, for, for me on this podcast, all about being transparent, open, honest, and just rocking the mic. And uh, if you need to swear, you're welcome to. I sometimes do I try not to, but right. I just it, do. It comes out. <laughs> it comes out. I, I'm passionate, right? I know you are too. And so Jeremy said, why are you standing? I'm like, bro, if I sat down, you just hear the, the chair squeaking around. <laughs> so I guess let's start right off because I think you know, you went independent prior to me doing so. My, my hand was kind of forced in the moment. Uh, it was something that we kind of basilated on and maybe planned on. You really, uh, I think, had a, um, a vision and jumped on that. I'm, I, honestly, I'm proud of you for doing that. Tell us what's that, what that's like because we're seeing more and more of it. How did you go from where you were to starting Ward, Ward Realty Services and, and just kind of tell us from 30,000 feet what that was like because I know it's not easy. It's not no, it's so, you know, in our business, we hit ceilings. And as an individual agent, we hit a ceiling. Uh, then we grow a team. And then you start hitting ceilings within a brokerage. Uh, and, and basically, like you, I'd hit a ceiling. And, um, you know, the broker just couldn't facilitate the business I was pulling in. Um, so we were kind of in a hurry, had to move in a hurry, so to speak. Um, and, and it was very stressful. But I think with you know, we belong to the same coaching. Tom Ferry's amazing, and he's and he's helped us build these businesses and see the systems that we need to be able to take care of our clients, our agents, and our families. Yeah. So you know, we had the system set, and so really moving from you know the big box into a, a more of a boutique, independent kind of our own style was okay because the systems are the same. We already had the system. We didn't anybody provide that. We had built that on our own through help from Tom Ferry's coaching. And so when we moved, you know, we really didn't miss, miss a lick. We just kept moving on. And actually, this year is, is looking like it's going to outpace our best year of last year. Last year, we sold about 335 homes. We're going to be somewhere between 330 and 400 this year. Awesome. So it really, you know, there's a lot of fear in the market of leaving that, that big umbrella, sure. that big gorilla. Uh, and, and so I felt it too. You know, we, we, we took a leap of faith. You know, the team got together. We, we talked about it we prayed about it and we just felt in our hearts that was that was there for us and, and it was time to go try this so so we did and, and man it's been amazing you know the freedom to to be able to market the way that that fits our team that fits our clients uh, and not having that 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 big grant said no it needs to be this way or that way which may work in in one market but not work in ours Right. And that's one of the things you talk about marketing and the freedom of that. You know, we, I think that's something we all do as team leaders. We're always trying to innovate it for the, in the marketing. And, and I always felt like, you know, can I do this? Um, when, do, who do, whose approval do I need to get? Uh, and, and I felt like because of that, when, whenever you feel that resistance, it stifles you probably more than we even know. Right. And now when you have that freedom, and I noticed that right away with you guys, you know, just from Facebook alone, the difference in how you were marketing on Facebook to immediately when you left, it's, it's very different. And, and it's very, I don't know, it almost becomes, when, when you lose the big brokerage, it almost becomes more real. It almost becomes more about people than about a brand, a big brand. And so I, you've done a great job with that. Thank you. You know, the same, I sit on the other side of this and I'll, and I'll watch your brand grow. And I've seen you 
and your business just, it's like a, a blooming flower. You know, once you got that freedom, you really started to bloom. Your business started to bloom. Your, your presence in the community really started, the outreach that you're doing is amazing, you know, and um, I think that that gives you, when you move outside that umbrella, you got that room to grow and, and yeah. you really let it be your business, your heart, your passion, and not have to try to, uh, and I'm not trying to be ugly, but drag the big box with you. Right. You just have a room to, to, to do this your own way. And so, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, if, if it doesn't work, I don't have anybody to blame but myself. Amen. So I'm going to make sure it works. Right. Amen. Well, I mean, look, Anthony Lamacchia, um, so another guy that I coach with, with uh, John Sheplack, um, Chris Landell. Um, I mean, there's so many people, you know, obviously Kyle Whistle. Uh, there's so many people yeah. now moving to that independent model. And, and it was funny because when we, when we made this move, which was forced on us a little bit, I mean, we had like four, 48 hours to get out, um, which was better. It was great. You know what? Thank God that it, that it occurred that way because uh, a lot of good has come out of that. But it, it, it's just one of those things where when you're forced into action, you got to take action. And sometimes, just like agents, we overthink things instead of taking action. So you're right. running the team and you've got your brokerage. Is, are you strictly a team-based or are you starting now to bring on agents that are operating under your brand outside of the team? Okay, so when we made the move um, – Basically, we had uh, 15 agents that I had to rehome and, and three assistants. So we, our goal was to get going, get legal, get the brokerage, you know, everything straight, get the wheels under it, and then grow it. So my focus was the team at first. Okay. So it's been a major focus of the team, but I've had some really good agents in the market that said, you know, JW, you do something, buddy. I want a chance to go with you. So... Um, you know, those people showed up and we brought them in and we're real selective about who we bring to the table. You know, we want the right fit. So we brought a couple agents on in the brokerage, but up until about right now, we've been in business since February 1st, 2018. Uh, here we are rolling into August. I'm ready to start building that brokerage. The okay. team's rock solid and I can take a little attention off that and start plowing into my brokerage. So I'm excited about, you know, this fall and early spring to see who shows up. Sure. Well, definitely. And have you, have you got into any of the verticals talking about title or mortgage or insurance? Uh, because, you know, something for me always, you know, a vision when I got into real estate was it was so strange to me that, okay, the realtor does this portion and then they go over there for the mortgage and they go over here for title work. And then, oh shit, we need, we need insurance. Call somebody. We need, we need insurance to close tomorrow. And it just always seemed odd to me that it didn't all exist under one roof. And, and I think maybe as, as we grow these teams, which are essentially businesses, right, that there's more of an opportunity right. for that to happen and to really, because to me, that's how you service a client at the highest level, is making everything available to them in one spot. We've, um, we're slowly moving into that, trying to stay within the legal realms of yeah. Indiana and Kentucky law. Uh, we have basically, I have a U-Haul business now. So my clients have access to U-Haul. So when we do a move, we can set it up, line it up. They've got a moving truck ready. They don't have to race around town to do that. Right. So, you know, that's not a big profit bucket for a brokerage, but it's, no, just it's a great service. service. Uh, we want to be a one-stop shop. Uh, we've got a title company within our, within our office, you know, so from the very beginning, from a listing standpoint, the title company is working on pre-title work to make sure there's no errors or anything that's going to surprise us when we get to the closing table. A lot of times agents don't, don't do that upfront work, but we're focused on trying to cut out any problems that's going to happen along the way. Because in real estate, you know, it's a constant problem solving job. It, you don't need any more surprises than you're already going to have. So yeah, um, you know, we've got partners with lenders and such. We haven't dove into that doing it ourselves yet. We want to grow slowly, strong, and just keep the wheels under it, under it, under it straight and, and not get distracted on, on other avenues. But yeah, that's, that's kind of the future, I think. The way we look at it is we want to have a very nice hub and then we're going to have satellite offices and services plowing into that hub uh, all the way around the community. You know, we service probably a 40 to 50 mile radius because uh, we're fairly rural where we're at. And, and that's my vision is, is having teams that plug into my hub. You know, I, it doesn't have to be you come to the word really services. It's realty services. I am just going to serve my agents, serve the teams that join it and serve my clients. And that's our vision. 
Yeah, I think that's awesome. And our, ours is very similar, right, is, is to have this new building that we've purchased as our hub and then to branch out into other markets, um, you know, with small satellite offices in those areas. And, you know, to me, I, I like, you know, it's funny, we, we did a, a podcast with Dustin Oldfather the other day, and he said something very similar to what you just said, you know, the slow growth is okay. And that doesn't mean backwards growth. Um, it doesn't mean, you know, last year we sold 300, now we're going to sell 301. It just means everybody's trying to 10x everything, right? They're trying to 100 times all this shit. It's like, you know, to me, having a very solid foundation, you cannot replace that. Um, and, and it's anything that I get into, I'm always thinking about, okay, I want to do it right. I want to build it with a good solid foundation. And then you hit a point that it just kind of takes off on its own. And that's, you know, that's how our business developed. I, I didn't set out going, okay, I'm going to have a team of 25 and, and do all this stuff. I set out to service a client and as needs came, added people. Um, but I, I love that you said that because I think too often right now, uh, everybody's trying to 10X everything. And, you know, well, as great as that sounds. Yeah, every, everybody wants to, to and, and I won't say everybody, there's those that just want to put bodies in seats. And that doesn't really help have a healthy growth pattern, you know, that, that dilutes, that dilutes what's there. And so, you know, we want to make sure everybody's good before we bring more in, uh, you know, John, I just have to just a, a little off the subject, just tell you what an awesome job I'm watching you do with your marketing and your video, your style, your quality. I mean, I watched you with, with the other brand and, and I've watched you with your brand and my goodness, you're the videos I share with my group saying, this is what we need to do. This is, this, look at, look at John do this, look at him do that. Like, man, that's amazing. And I just think that that, that freedom that you've developed with your own brand is really just put you at 110, 120%. And it's just amazing. I just want to, you know, good job, man. That's well, I awesome. appreciate it. I, I thank you. It's good to get that feedback, right? I mean, we're running, we're doing all these things and we don't know the impact that it has. Uh, and, and talking maybe a little bit more about the marketing side of things, because I think that, Facebook is so underutilized by agents in the market. It blows my mind. I'm like, you're like, well, I, the sound isn't good or I'm not dressed right. I'm like, the shit is free. Do you realize that? You go like this, people watch and it's free. It doesn't even cost anything. And, and people get so caught up in it being perfect. And I think the beauty of, of Facebook Live really is that it's the truth, right? It, yeah. You don't have, you know, it's like Gary Vee always talking, talks about document, don't create. And that's one of the things that we really started after we went to Asia 21, uh, 2021 in Miami with Gary was just start documenting. Um, and I've always been pretty much an open book. I mean, I'll tell someone my life story in, in a heartbeat, you know, and, and hopefully it has a positive impact on them. But um, people are so worried. It goes back to what I said earlier. They just get paralyzed with thinking about doing stuff instead of just taking action and you're an action taker right i mean look i remember when you like i was on facebook i'm like holy cow he went independent all oh, those signs are pretty sweet oh nice new shirts like shit is just rolling and happening who manages all that stuff for you well so i've got um, i couldn't by no means do it myself i've got four full-time assistants i've got an office manager that, that parts as a, a, t a transaction coordinator for the buyer side and then we do a high listing volume. So I've got a listing coordinator that is just working on listings as soon as they're turned in, you know, taking care of the agents, pulling paperwork, getting it ready for them. Then I've got a marketing coordinator and we've added her in the last maybe three months. And Amanda's done an amazing job really putting the polish to the stuff that, you know, I'm an idea guy. I've got all these ideas that I want to implement. And we would go out to Summit, we'd go to Tom Craven, I'd come back just vibrating with all this stuff, but I really didn't have that implementer. So she's she between Jen and Amanda, you know, an operator and an implementer, and she polishes it and makes it look good for us. We've got our own in-house marketing girl. And in, in our area, you know, the, the, the commissions are not huge. You know, you're doing good at an average two hundred thousand dollar sales price. So there's not room for a big salary, but she does an amazing job at just taking my little ideas and polishing them and, and make them look good for our clients and our agents. And and we're excited. We we did a video today about some uh, uh, you know, we're problem solvers in this market, John, as you know, like, so we've got a inventory problem. I think everybody does. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's not a pro it, it's a problem, but there's a fix to it. So like we did a video today on, um, renovation loans. There's so many of these houses out here that are maybe not exactly what somebody wants, but a little vision and a product to put them in it. It can be. Yeah. So we did some videos on that and just, 
just the response from past clients, future clients, people in the community are like, oh my gosh, like you all really care and are trying to figure out ways to make people's dreams come true. And it's, that song. Song. Do that video. <laughs> it's good. I can hook you up with the product, but it's a good deal. So, you know, it's like three and a half percent down, make the home the way you want it. It's an FHA product. So, well, and, and you're right. I mean, we are problem solvers. We are innovators. Um, we are psychiatrists. We wear many hats, right? And so uh, it's interesting because, you know, going through this, I had to go get my broker license. And in Michigan, when you go to, to study for your broker's brokerage license, you're in a classroom of the same people that are trying to get their real estate license, which was interesting oh, wow. in itself. Um, I liked it. I enjoyed that week. I'm like, man, I'm just here chilling with a bunch of down to earth people, uh, people that are trying to get into real estate and trying to do something good. But the lady that I sat next to had a very interesting statement. She was there for, I was the only one there, two, one other person, myself and one other, one other male there for the brokerage uh, license. But this lady said to me, she goes, you know, it seems strange because everyone says it's such a great time to get into real estate but there's low inventory and more realtors. And that math doesn't work well in my mind. And I was like, wow, she's right. And I never thought about that. But so we've got all of these new realtors getting into this. I want to talk about two things. We're going to talk about new realtors, and I'm writing this down, and broker switches. Because it's always interesting. So we've got this plethora of new realtors coming into the market. And you know, our, our, the failure rate in our industry, I think is 87%, it's super, huge. super big failure rate. And they're coming in at a time when I would say it's even more difficult because the established people are established and it's tough to gain traction against them. Uh, and so you see a lot of agents come in and they sell one, two, three homes and then they're, and then, and then they struggle. Um, and so well, and it, I'm sorry. It, 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 it's tough even for the established people because the new agent's going to come in, family's going to help them, friends are going to help them. Homes will sell right now if you can price them correctly, and then it dries up for them. Right. So their business just dried up. They failed, and it was opportunities that we would have had sure. that we weren't able to get to because people were helping the people they know. And it is. It's, it's, we were just talking about this the other day. To be a new agent would be really scary right now. I mean, the, the market's great, but there's, the inventory's not there. Bro, I tell people all the time, and I think they're bulls they probably think I'm bullshitting, but literally, and I'm not even kidding, you know, because look, we always have that, oh, well, I don't know about a team, the commissions are less, and I'm like, you're worried about your 1099 or your commission split, right? Like, and so the, the point in this is if I, let's just say I had to move, right? I had to move the state, um, you know, my son got into whatever the hell caused it. If I moved to another state, I would simply go join a team. Literally, I wouldn't even try to mess with it because I know I could go into a system, plug and play, and I know that I can outwork everyone there, and I'm going to crush it. And, and I think, crush. yeah, and I think the problem is even you know the people that kind of frown on the team because of the commission splits, they don't realize all the value behind it. And then the second part of that is even as much value as there is, if you don't work, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I had an agent come to me the other day. He was, he was new to the team. He came from a, from a team that had a builder and, and then things were just not working out there. And he had a selling opportunity with us. So he came uh, and he's done fairly well, but he was like, man, you know, I feel like I'd have been doing better. I said, you're fine. We sat down, we did a little coaching, you know, as, as team leaders, we're there, you know, to take the coaching we've learned and help implement it into our people. Yeah. And, uh, so we talked a little bit. He come back next week and he said, I figured out the problem. I said, great, man. What's going on? He said, it's me. I said, dude, that's the man. You manned up. That is awesome. Exactly. No, he's boom, boom, boom. He's rocking it out. And I like to explain it like, remember, John, when the first time you rode a bicycle, like my father got behind me, he held on to the seat. I had training wheels and he kind of guided me a little bit as I yeah. went. And then as I got better with the training wheels, he took those off. He got me going. He gave me that push. Yeah. And then I was going. And then I could build speed, right? It's the same thing with a team leader. We're giving them that push to get them rolling. But you had to keep pedaling gotta keep pedaling there's gonna right. be hill <laughs> so, so you the best analogy ever <laughs> but truly you got to keep pedaling and, and you know even on a team structure it cannot save the realtors from the roller coaster and, and we all know what that is get a bunch of deals you know think you got it good go golf screw off fall off and yep. just always trying to preach that consistency you know something john sheplak always says to us is you've got to stay super attached to the process, screw the outcome. If you stay attached right. to the process, the outcome will take care of itself. 
Right. But the process isn't pretty. The process isn't sexy. Right. It's, work. it's, it's the grind. It's making your calls. It's doing the things that, that don't feel like they're producing, but they're so, you know, it's like that, that pebble in a pond. I mean, uh, yeah, pond, pebble in a pond, pond in a pebble, you know, that ripple effect that you don't even realize is happening. Right. Uh, people do an open house. And I guess really we're just talking to agents right now. Right. Like, you know, you do an open house and you get 10 people to sign in and then you never call them. Well, then how no the open house was no good. And so right. you have to have a system that you continually just stay attached to because the truth is all of these things that we I, I always feel like this. We have the playbook. All you gotta do is follow the playbook and you will do very well. And when you tr start doing well and then you try to reinvent the playbook, it doesn't work out that well. Yeah. So you're bringing on agents, right? Brand new agent to the team seasoned agent what is what are they going to experience different from one another if i'm a brand new agent what when i come to word services how are you helping me reach my, uh, my you know my true abilities so we're going to have a you know an opening interview with them and, and identify kind of a swat so where's their strengths or weaknesses the threats uh, and the opportunities that they may have uh, and with an experienced agent, it's not so much teaching them the paperwork other than how we like the paperwork to be, how many forms you got. We've got a checklist for that. So, you know, follow the checklist, follow the system. But making that polish, taking that agent and polishing them, showing them some new systems, maybe some better lead generation systems, figuring out what they're good at, what they're not. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of like Tom says, we all shoot like buckshot to cover right. a big area, then find out what works, then we target in. So that's what we're doing for, for the experienced agent is like getting them really good at what they're good at. The new agent, you know, you, you got to kind of figure that out with them. So you're going to put some solid stuff in front of them that you know that works and kind of test them at that to make sure they're going to do that and, and kind of handhold them. And, you know, I'm, I'm very, uh, you know, I call my, I'm a giver. So I see a guy coming in, I'm going to give him enough business to, to, to get them on their feet. And, you know, yeah, the split's not a hundred percent, but, 100% of nothing is nothing. But if I'm giving you business, here's three deals that are going to pay your dues. It's going to, they're going to put food on your plate for the next six months. Now I expect you to do these systems and generate three more. Yeah. Uh, so we try to hold them accountable. Right now we're doing a half an hour coaching call with uh, me and my agent once a month just to kind of keep them focused, keep them on track, and look for any weaknesses or struggles that are happening. And I want to know. I want to know what's bothering you. What's, where are you struggling? And where are you succeeding? Because you need an acknowledge for that. So I think it's just really, you know, it's 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 one-on-one. -on -one. There's no set way for any one person. It's, it's just focusing on the person and where they want to go. Right now, I'm, I'm telling my agents, hey, we've got about 18 months to two years to really make, make, make things happen, yeah. to get rooted in, to get your business. Um, I want you to be ready when this market shifts. We don't know if it's going to left or right, up or down. We know there's going to be a change, but at that point, I don't want you to stress about going on vacation. I don't want you to stress about making your mortgage. So we're, we're trying to really work two years out, you know, grow two years out. What do we need to happen now to make sure in two years we're in good shape? Yeah, that's a great point because, you know, in real estate, what we do now pays off three, six months down the road. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. nothing instant in real estate. And, and so we always talk about, and I, that goes back to the roller coaster, right? You've got to keep doing the things that got you there. And, and I think that comes back down to, to systems. Um, I am very, like, I could sell 20 houses at home and I would feel like I did nothing. I, just me. I, I need to be in the office, right? Of course, I got, have to be accountable to a lot of other people as well. But something I've learned over the last month is if I just take one day off, right? One day, even if it's just from, from the morning until one or two and then come in, I get so much done in that little bit of time because, you know, now when we come in, we do, our time is spread very thin amongst, right. all, amongst all of our people. So uh, what is your, what is your best lead source? Okay. So, um, absolutely online. Okay. Um, there's several platforms in our area, you know, Zillow strong, you know, we, you and I have talked about that over the years that, that, a lot of people run run from that, but it really is. I mean, it's strong. It's going to provide you with leads. Uh, we we try to do you know the scripts and the, the practicing with the agents once a week to to keep them up on their game when we get those they get those calls in that they know how to handle them. Um, you know, it's just old fashioned uh, belly to belly. You know, getting out, beating on some doors, talking to people, uh, staying in touch with your past clients, guys. Bingo, that's it. Like that's where the low hanging fruit's at, right? It's the thing that nobody wants to do, 
we're all so busy chasing this new business, we ignore our old business. You need to reverse that. Like, get in front of your old business because those guys love you. You've done a good job for them. They're glad to refer you. I think there's a fear in our in our market or in our as agents that we're bothering our past clients or that we're begging or something like that. Yeah. They are wondering why we're not talking to them. Why why wouldn't we reach out to them? Yeah, I heard from you in a year. Right. You, I mean, are you on the five a.m. call with Sharon? No, I'm not. Okay, so check it out, 5amclub.net for all of our listeners. Uh, Sharon Shavatsa, every morning, he has to do it at 5 a.m. because he's in California. We get to listen to it at 8, right? That's kind of nice. But, um, you know, that's what Sharon says. You know, you have to ask for business. Don't ask, don't get. If you don't ask, you're not going to get. And it's the same with our, with our sphere. You know, I think that, you know, obviously it's not, hey, I hope you're doing well. I ain't got any business for me. But it's just it's, it's maintaining the relationship that you've already created. And, and I think uh, coming from a place which we all do, you know, of service from our heart to really help them. But if you don't talk to them for six months, it's a whole hell of a lot harder to call them yeah. and, and talk some shit and then ask for business. If you're talking right. to them every month or every couple of weeks, then it comes organically because it's really all about staying top of mind with them. But you're right. Our sphere, uh, we just went through our hometown the other day. We pulled everybody that had, we went by agent, right? Um, so obviously I don't have to say names, but we went by agent. When is the last time you called, text, or email right. clients that you've closed? It wasn't pretty. And, and it's not because they have bad intentions. It's just that you get focused on the bright, shiny object. And you forget mm -hmm. about people that you've already built relationships with. So I think that's a great one to share with our audience. You know, we're always we, bright and shiny, but man, you've already got it right there. I had an agent come to me a few months ago and he, you know, it's the roller coaster. So he'd been up here and he stopped doing his prospects and stopped doing his stuff. You know, even with transaction coordinators, he seems to, to want to try to keep it here. Right. And, and take care of it on himself rather than let it go and go prospect. Um, so he asked me, man, what do I do? What do I do? I said, you know, did, were you, you were in the market in 2008, nine, right? And he said, yes, I was. I said, how many houses did you sell? And he said, I don't know, 35 or so, which is good. Yeah. I said, well, how much equity do you think is wrapped up in those 35 homes? I want you to start calling people that you don't have sold houses to in these markets and these neighborhoods. You feel like they're, they're growing and, and just ask them if, if they're curious, you know, do you, do you know how much uh, equity you have in your home? Right. He's like, really? And I was like, call them, call them. He called five and landed like three deals that sold, you know, he listed them and they sold within two or three days. And the guys walked away with huge amount of equities, big hugs at closing, and went bought another house. So, you know, that was like six homes on a couple phone calls. I mean, these people want to work with you, especially if you can deliver good news. In this market, you can deliver some great news. Oh I remember delivering, you know, mostly bad news when the market was bad, right? And it's fun now to the door and, and, you know, they go like this when they find out that they've actually got quite a bit of equity. Uh, going back to the team model versus the brokerages, because here's the other thing that I see so often is, you know, um, you know, if we're in a place of recruiting, which right now we're, you know, with all of the changes and everything going on, I took my, you know, my foot off the pedal of that. I want to, right. I want to grow. And I really, I want to do it to provide opportunities to people. You know, I love taking, yeah. you know, the, the Jake, um, who's 26 year old and was a waiter at a restaurant and now he's going to make a hundred grand this year. Right. That's huge. That's awesome. I love taking the agent that uh, has been in real estate for 15 years and was so against joining a team, but finally did. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh, you know, oh, you're going to have leads, and you're going to have support, you're going to have all of this. And you know what he said to me when I asked him one day? I said, you know, what, what's the best thing since you've joined the team? He said, peace of mind. I don't have to worry about where my next deal is coming from or if I'm going to have my next deal or, or when the next one will be because I have the steady stream of business. And so, you know, providing that security to people is huge for me. I always say, like, and I know you feel the same way. I want to help people with their career. I don't want to help them sell a house. I want to help them have a sustainable career forever. But going back to how I got here is the, you know, talking about the brokerages. And it's not about, you know, the red, white, blue, the red, white, the black. None of that shit matters to me. No. My belief is that if you're struggling, whether you're brand new, um, gosh, that's even more difficult. Imagine being a brand new agent and then going into a brokerage. Holy yeah. cow. I mean, yeah. so, but they, they hop around as if, if I change this from this, that shit's going to change for me. And I never understood that 
And I, maybe that's, maybe that's, do I have a mirror here? No, I'll just use my phone. Maybe that's when you got to look in the mirror and say, uh, is there a better way? You know what I mean? Right. You'll see someone, they'll go from KW and no knock on any of these people, right? It's just, right. I believe right. your bridge model is broken. Hey, we got a fancy ass office for you. Come on in. We're going to do everything for you. And then they don't get much and then they start. And I yep, think they that's just, yeah. because I lived that when I started. Yeah, I, I've, I've talked to, uh, it's almost fair, unfair for a new agent that joins my team. Because when they come in, they get all the support. They feel like that's just real estate. That's what right. everybody does, right? right? And I've I've had it. I've had it where it didn't work out, and they go to uh, you know a big box or red, green, orange, wherever, right. uh, and and they and they call me back in in six months, and they go, "Oh my gosh, I had no idea what you all were providing." Uh, you know, man, I I made a mistake, and, and that's okay. Like right. I get it. So. For me, you know, if if you've been to you welcome those people right, back. It, it depends on attitude and right. work ethic. If, if a person attitude, work ethic, we won't have a problem. They will succeed because right. the systems are proven. Just like when you and I moved, we didn't skip the systems. Is what did it? We had the work ethic. We stuck to our systems. Here we are today, doing the same business or better. Yeah. And that's the same thing for the agents. As long as they can plug in and they're able to work our systems and have an open mind and just trust the system, like you were talking about earlier, right. they're going to score. You know, uh, when my team was a little smaller, we were down to five agents. I could take a brand new agent off the street, almost guarantee them 50, de 50 deals a year. And they were like, oh, I don't know. And I would pull out a spreadsheet and say, okay, here's the team. How many deals each did they do? Like, boom, 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 boom. It was 50 deals on average. Yeah. And, and now that the team's grown, we're growing a little quicker. Uh, than, than I would like, but it's still, I can pretty much guarantee him 30 deals, you know, and that's, that's twice now. So average of a great agent at a good brokerage, you know? So I think the teams are the future. Um, you know, Tom's, Tom spoke about it years. You know, you're either going to be on a team or you're going to run a team. Yeah. And I think for us guys that, you know, maybe we're, we're a little, we're, we're older now and, and we're running <laughs> these things, got a few gray hairs. It's, it, I don't care. I mean, I do care about making commissions, but the win is when I see the lights come on my agents, that I, that light bulb comes on and they get it. They've got it. They pick up and they run with it and they're scoring, man. And I know for you, John, it's the same way. Like that is when I go home and I feel like, man, I had a good day. Like oh, this guy yeah. got it. We've got a kid on our team that played five years at uh, university of Tennessee football and uh, he got his first deal under contract and that sucker, he's a big boy, right? He's a lineman. He put me on his shoulder, ran through the office carrying me, just hooting and hollering. And I, I just love those, like you said, I love those moments. And that's kind of when the light bulb, you know, and then he sat back down and he said, um, he, 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 in his mind, he kind of calculated how much money he was going to make. And he's like, bro, I've never had them. I've never even seen that much money in my life. And he was, you know, darn near in tears. And so I mean, that's what our industry is so beautiful. You know, the, the thing about our industry that I just love is that it gives back what you put in. You yeah. know, and uh, I, I, I trained racehorses for a long time, and the theory there is that it would give back what you put in. But at the end of the day, you've got an animal that you've got to depend on to run around the track really fast, and they get right, sick. Right, right. You know, shit happens. But, um, you know, in this business, you, you get back what you put in, but you also have the ability to change lives and also just meet a ton of wonderful amazing people and and that's what I think for us as ind independent brokerages now I think that's where that touch really is you know that human element to be connected to people and and us to be able to be their provider uh, I just think is you know it's, it's magical there's definitely something magical about being independent yeah I, I agree you know we, we may not be the biggest uh, uh, brand in, in the market but you may touch more lives, uh, you know, strongly. Um, right. it just, I, I was had lunch with one of my agents today and she was talking about one of her friends that had got a master's degree and she had just got a raise. And so they were celebrating and the, the lady uh, uh, shared with her what she had made. And my agent sitting there, you know, very sharp girl, uh, very hard worker, but she's, she's embraced our systems and she's making lots of money. Right. And she, thought, oh my gosh, I don't have $90,000 for the college debt. I don't, I don't have a nine to five I've got to do. You know, I come in, I knock it out, I do what you tell me. Uh, she gets to spend time with her kid, her family, and then we, we, 
as a team, John, and I'm sure you're the same way, like we've got each other's back. Yeah, for sure. We're not competing against each other, but, you know, that momentum, it plays off each other. It's iron sharpening iron, and we're all racing, and we're going, and we've got each other's back on vacation. You know, when I was at brokerages, hey, can somebody cover my business while I'm gone? I, I want to take this, you know, severely needed vacation with my family, and I would get down there, my phone's blowing up, blowing up, blowing up. Right now, I can forward my phone to one of my teammates, and they can forward it to me and go take your vacation. I got you. Unless something's getting ready just to go crazy that you need to be involved in, you're not going to hear from me. You're going to come back, and, and you're going to look at your deposit slips, and I've deposited closings into your bank account, and, and, and it's awesome. You know, I took a month off this year, and it was a, about three months into opening a new brokerage. This team is so strong, I took a month off. The service, the systems, and the admins, the agents. I didn't get the maybe one or two calls just to see, you know, what would you do on this, Jeremy? No problem. Talk to you later. Uh, a month off driving across the country, and it was amazing. I couldn't have done that no. as an individual agent. You know, you I have done that three years ago. No, I couldn't have. And it just really showed me the systems are strong. We've got this thing polished. It's rolling. And like I say, I'm ready to start plugging people in. And yeah. I think it's, it really is the future. Uh, and, and thank God that, that I was exposed to guys like you and uh, Tom Ferry, Bill Pipes, you know, early on and really got to jump on this thing and was able to get out in front of the rest. You know, we're, there's one team that does more volume in our market. A great guy, great team. Uh, they're they're partnering with a large builder. So they're getting, you know, hundreds yeah. of homes. Them. That's great. I love it for them. For me, you know, I think the thing is, like, I've never had anything given to me. I want to earn it, and so does my team. So we just grit, we grind, and we go out there and get it done. And, and I can't, couldn't be prouder of them for it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just amazing to live in these times with this great market, and, and there's plenty of problems to solve. You know, we got to scratch our head quite a bit. But with a team, you can get a lot more done. You'll just outproduce, outproduce a single agent all day long. Well, no doubt about it. I mean, I, and I think that, you know, it becomes the word team we use a lot, but really becomes a family. And I think that's what's yes. great about it is that, you know, a, a, a couple of weeks from now, we've got everybody coming to our house, you know, cook out, go on the boat, spend time together. And those are the things that, you know, again, uh, in, in big boxes, you know, yeah, they'll have a Christmas party, but does anybody really want to be there? Um, and when we have our Christmas party, it's just us and it's tight and we're cheering for each other. And, you know, there's just a different dynamic to it, to it I think. Um, and it, it's a good thing. What is your vision? I mean, you mentioned, you know, early, early on, you mentioned, I almost said show, like this is a damn show. We're not quite there. We, we always put on a show, John. Yeah, no doubt about that. But what, so your vision, um, satellite in your area and then doing or excuse me hub in your area and then satellite around it yeah i, I want to have a strong um so ward realty services is is a is a brokerage here to serve agents in real estate manner whether it's you know you need transaction coordination and you're a single agent with my company you can plug into that if you're on the team you have all these other services that are there for you um right. so what i want to do is build that hub that's just full of service for people for yeah. clients and for agents and we grow it out and then hopefully serve our community, you know, with some of our profits, which back and do some things. I'll, I'll watch you do that as well. Um, so that's, that's the deal. And, you know, let's let this thing grow as, as big and as wide as it'll go. Uh, I've got an opportunity in Washington state and Idaho right now to, to open up some things. Uh, I've got to get my license there first. It's, it's a little of a challenge, but there's opportunities in, in real estate everywhere. Uh, if you've got an open mind and you think outside of the box. So that's where we're at. We're starting here in Southern Indiana. We're going to run into Kentucky where we're doing our business is spread over uh, three counties, 30% in each county and then 10% in Kentucky. So we're looking to increase those margins in Kentucky as we get our footprint over there. And it's, it's actually, I'm having to turn a few people down right now. As far as, you know, bringing in new agents, John, I'm just making sure that the foundation's really firm. Like we talked about, I have some that are that are ready to come and and I've just been open with them you know I, I don't ever want to just tell people oh come on come on just just come on it's not that used car salesman it's it's okay I feel like we're we're in good shape we can handle your volume coming in I want to make sure it's good now come on in right. you know it's not oh get them while they're hot when it recruits good these are people's lives these are people's future it, it, it's not just a matter of getting a contract signed 
this is real. This is their career. And just like you said, I think we're both concerned about their, their career and watching them succeed. You know, even, even uh, when I'm gone, I want to leave a legacy. You know, when, when we pass, I want somebody to walk by that cask and say, you know, that guy helped me. Yeah. He didn't give me hundreds of dollars, hundred dollar bills. Like he helped me. He, he taught me something that, that I can take and teach my kids because people's done that for me. And I remember that like memories is what you really get to keep the money. It stays here. Well, so, money, right? I mean, you know, the money, the money comes and goes. And I think that if you're yeah. doing the money, um, and yes, it gives us some nice choices, right? You took a, a month vacation, right. but you didn't go to Vegas. You spent it with your family. You might've drove through Vegas, I don't know, but you spent it with your family. Yeah. And I think it gives us some nice choices. There's no doubt about that, but uh, you know, it's not why we do it. People, I think, too often see us as, oh, yeah, well, yeah, you want to recruit, recruit your team so big so you could be rich. Well, I mean, look, money is a byproduct of, of, of growth. Money is a byproduct of, of service. Of service. A byproduct of doing the right thing over and over and over. Um, and, and so does that come with it at some point? Probably. I don't know. We're not there yet. But, you know, I right. – really is is to provide opportunity for people and I think you know when you lead we talked about this all the time if you run your business with your heart which I do and you do and Dustin does and Jason Will does I mean so many of the people you know it's, it's interesting to me right we go to these coaching events there's hundreds maybe sometimes <laughs> of people and then there's certain people that are drawn to each other and spend time together and we develop these friendships I'm not at your house I'm not talking to you on the phone right. every day. Um, I haven't talked to you in a while but because of that I and I think we have the same mindset that yeah. is, friendship is developed. And I think that's a beautiful thing. You know, it, it's with a lot of uh, people that we've met in coaching. And there's some people we don't click with, but they click with somebody else. And that's okay. Right. Right. By the way, this right here, I have a billboard coming out where I'm just going like this. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, because we were voted number one in our community four years in a row now for the number one. That's team. amazing. Congrats. Well, but I stole this from Chris Landell. Yeah, out of Minnesota, which uh, he threw that on the billboard, but it was pretty awesome. Our our business is definitely about um, R and D, and also about being coachable. And so, something that I always kind of like to talk about because new agents, right? Are you coachable? Uh, seasoned agents who are stuck doing fifteen a year or twenty a year and want to do fifty, are you coachable? And I think you know to look at the leaders that are coachable. Um, because they're going to be the ones that want to help you coach, and then you've got to be coachable. So how do you discern that when you're interviewing people? You just ask them, are you coachable? Are you trying to trick them to see if they really are? Because what they say and what they do, we know that shit's not always the same. Well, I I like to do three interviews, Um, and I like to see how consistent they are in those interviews, how they answer the questions. There's no real tricks to it. It's just straight-up questions and answers. Uh, some of them, you know, I'll bring a sheet in for the most part. It's got some just basics on it. I want to know, do you have finances in the bank, in the bank for a six months cushion? Yeah. You know, I mean, how many times have we seen people come in and they're workers, but it, you know, we write a deal today. If it's not cash, it's 30 to 45 days before it closes. So, you know, let's, let's start off on the right foot. Right. Um, and so you, you got to kind of look at that and just, just some questions to see where they're at in their life and, and, you know, what, People will tell you, you know, my, my son told me something the other day. He was talking about a girl he was talking about, you know, how she wished she had her her body back when she was 19. and She'd do anything for that. And he goes, would you do some sit-ups? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's that simple. There, there's a way to fix that. So uh, when we interview these guys, it's like, what would you be willing to do in this situation? You know, and they're not tricks. You know, we're looking for integrity. I'm looking for work ethic. I'm looking for somebody that's coachable. And somebody that would open up to me, I find that when I talk to my agents, I learn something too. When I talk to you, John, I learn something about myself. I learn something from you. So the iron sharpens the iron again. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody that, that's eager, that's willing to work, they're coachable. And, and sometimes you, you, you don't judge them perfectly, but with a team, there's strengths and everybody has different strengths. And when you combine those together, man, you're strong. Yeah. Um, and, and it, I, I look at a lot of things spiritually. I mean, I think like all the self-help books we read all stem from one book and that's the Bible. And, and, and you read that you, and you pick up things. And like the thing that I think stood out to me, the biggest when I left Ford Motor Company to jump into real estate, which 
it, it was 2006. It was like jumping out of the pot to the frying pan. Uh, Ford was having problems. I took a bout, jumped into real estate, and, and work, work, work. And oh my gosh, 2008 hit. But you know, Lord says He'll prosper. He'll prosper what you lay your hand to in biblical terms. So what's that tell you? Like you got to work your systems. You know, when I'm when I'm talking to these angels, I need to know that they're willing to work. They're willing to trust me. Do we have trust starting today? Uh, and I've got your back. And, you know, after about three meetings with people, I will enter, you know, maybe the first meeting is just me and them. Second meeting, it's me and maybe my Jen, my TC. The third meeting, maybe it's me, Jen, and a couple of agents just randomly I pull out. And they're all asking different questions. And I got to see how they interact with people right. and how well a fit they are with the team. And then the team goes back and they decide, okay, how, how, how do we feel these people will mesh with us? They feel like they're a good fit or not. And there's agents that I just would love to have on the, on the team. And, and the agent said, you know, I, I just I feel like there's this, that, and other. And then down the road that pops up somewhere else. And I go, oh, thank God. I can trust my team to protect me. Right. These guys, the teams are looking out for us as team leaders as well as we're looking out for them. Well, it's their culture also, right? It's yes, like not what we're trying to create it's their culture also and so i think for people to live inside of that um, but is there some scarcity sometimes though right where, where the agents feel like because we hear this we know it's not true we know it's actually the opposite but agents feel like well more people come in then i get less leads and we know the exact opposite occurs because the more signs that are up the more the phone rings Absolutely. The more websites are out there, the more it's, it's, it's kind of like fishing. The more lures you can put in the water, the better chances of, of the fish biting. Right. And, and I, and I see it and, you know, we've had to deal with that some and uh, even the age and I had one that, that would really be concerned about that. You know, I, I, it's going to cause me to be less, but after people coming on and there was no scarcity, more people come on, no scarcity, more people come on. There's a bundle, but it's abundant, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, the more people that, and you got to have the right people. They got to be willing to go out and get your name out, advertise, work, do their thing. It just, it just builds more business. It's momentum, really. It's just more momentum for, momentum for the brokerage. It's, it's, it's a good thing. Well, I think with something that's interesting too is I think sometimes we don't realize how big our brands have grown. You know, when when <laughs> just come in and, and say. You know, I, I mean, we, we <clears throat> excuse me, hired a uh, a realtor from three cities away. He's like, I see your stuff everywhere. You do? Yeah. We, but, oh, yeah. you know, I think sometimes we don't realize because we're not ego driven, right? We're not driving on the street to count on our freaking signs. I mean, right. I put up a billboard, I don't even go look at the damn thing. Right? Yeah, it's embarrassing. <laughs> totally. I don't do it because I want to see myself. I, I do it because it's part of it. Um, but, yeah. but when you start to hear those things from other people uh, inside of the community, you know, for us, when we left, there was nowhere else for us to go. We, we, we talked like, okay, I, I brought in some of the senior agents and said, what do you want to do? We've got $40 to get the hell out of here. What do you want to do? And they all said independent, independent right away. But it was funny after we landed in this building, we looked around like there's, there's nobody in our market big enough to house us. Other right. Than yeah. We built out and built out and built out. So pretty amazing stuff. So I, uh, also. I have to give credit to, to an agent in our market. Um, she was with a uh, same brand that I was with, different brokerage. And I was trying to make this decision, you know, and everybody knew I was kind of in between where, where was I going to go with, you know, with this brand or my own brand and, you know, it, humble. You know, I just, I just, you said exactly like I didn't realize the mark I had on the business around here. And she said, she said, Jeremy, I don't think you, I don't think you realize the power you have in our market and the impact you have in our market. I think you need to rethink going somewhere else other than your own. And man, it really made me step back. I, it was hard for me to accept that because now I just had my head down. I'm working. I'm trying to support my staff and, and my agents and, you know, and those guys are, are doing a lot of the work, you know, it's them that cause us to be successful. It's, it's, it's not you and I, you know, we're, we're driving the ship, man, but, but they're powering it. Sure. And, um, it's 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 very humbling and very very nice to hear that and I and I see it with you you know uh, the power you have in your market I can see it in Indiana and you're in Michigan you know I don't see any other Michigan agents with these awesome videos and this marketing and this branding and I and I'm friends with many but I don't I don't see them that you're being seen you're being heard you're all doing the right things out there your your crew is is incredible well thank and you so, we're just we're just all trying to you know 
trying to forge our path. I mean, I just want to serve, lead, and inspire people. Um, and, and at the same time, you know, I came up with something as we were kind of going through this, um, trying to really um, just visualize who I really want in my life. Because time is time and space and family and work. And, and it kind of came down to, you know, if, if I can't serve, lead, and inspire you, then what's the point of being here? And vice versa, though. I, I, I'm looking for people to serve, lead, and inspire me also. You know, yeah. and we, I think that you mentioned iron sharpens iron quite a few times. I think that's super important to think about, um, you know, when it's all said and done, I, I think so often realtors get focused on the commission splits. And I would just, yeah. if you're brand new in the business, man, go look at some teams in whatever marketplace you're in. Because as I said earlier, if I were, you know, as successful as I've been, right? I mean, I'm still selling. I'm still selling. I mean, I, I think I did 103 transactions myself last year. Um, Amazing. Probably got 70 pending right now and sold, pending and sold for the year. Um, so I'm still running a lot of direction. And, and even with that, with all the knowledge, if I moved to Indiana, I'm going to work for Ward. Because I don't have right. to reinvent the wheel. You know, and yeah. so I would just say to the newer agents in the marketplace, take a look at that. Um, take a look at that team structure. And then also, if you're, you know, if you're somebody that's in uh, real estate, have been for a while, and, and maybe you're just, you know, you're hitting your 10, 15, even 20, but you want to double or triple, again, look at a team because it's all about time. And, I, you know, one of the biggest things about the team is because of all the support behind you, you get to just focus on serving your clients, which means selling more real estate uh, and not the work and pushing signs and running lockboxes and calling the marketing person and doing all of those things. You know, you said it best. You plug into the system and then you just work your tail off on selling homes and serving clients. Right. And it's a beautiful thing. I mean, it really is. You know, and there's, there's opportunities within team for successful agents, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got choices. You, you get your start, you get going, you learn your systems, you do a good job. You could, you could go within the brokerage and be your independent agent, maybe hire uh, like for us, we have a TC that would be available for them to free them up where they can do money producing activities. But what I like, what, what some of the things we're doing right now is I've got some rock stars on the team that have been with me for a while. They've got it. They get it. They, they're they like you. They're doing 80 homes a year on a team. And they, they, they've they got crumbs that are starting to fall off the table. So we take a, an agent that we're training up. We plug them in and we do a sub team. And then that experienced agent gets the mentor the, the less experienced agent and kind of plow some of that business over to them where they're kind of get their wheels rolling and we're, they're all still using our support system in the background. And man, that's, that's been awesome. Like that sub team is starting to develop. Even I'm still selling like you, John, I don't sell as many homes as you do. I've got one person that kind of, um, I, I spread the business without the team, but I've got a, a, a young agent that works directly with me on my business to help free me up to wear these other hats in the brokerage, but, uh, there, you know, I think the, there's, there, maybe there was an old team plan that was around that just seemed like everything was fed up to the team leader. He profited from it. Everybody else just had to work. And I feel like it's, it's kind of a top to the bottom with us. We're raining down the leads, raining down the business and everybody wins. And then when you get a leader that stands up with your team, you have an opportunity to help them succeed with, with others. Sure. I don't even take leads. I mean, you know, I, mm -hmm. when I say I have these sales, these are all listings that, you know, that are just, you know, uh, listing leads, but I take no buyer leads. I don't do I mean, I two or three buyers a year. Like you know, a very good friend of mine just bought an office building. You know, I handled that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Another good friend of mine uh, bought a car dealership. I handled that. Um, but he wanted yeah. to, right. I mean, be, mm -hmm. I mean, a very, very good friend. Um, and so you don't want to shove those people off, right? They don't want to be pushed yeah. aside, but new business coming in, um, all of our Zillow leads or anything call, I do not take any leads, any buyer side leads for sure. So, um, and that's, that's a big, you know, attribute to your success, John, is you're not taken from the team. No. And it's the same thing I do. I don't see if it's not a take for me. It's a give back. I don't need, you know, my business and your business is, you know, we could, we can rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, our job is to help others. Yeah. And so I don't take any of the buyer leads. I don't take any of the seller leads. I only work my book of business and people that just want to work with me. Cause even my past clients, if they're okay with us, say, Hey, you know, let me hook you up with Chelsea. Let me hook you up with Dave. They're going to take great care of you. I'm going to be around in the background to support them. Uh, and you know, cause at some point you can't do it all. 
but it's a good opportunity for these newer agents to come in and have a, a client that already trusts your brand and already trusts your team leader, which is going to just make them easier to work with. Because as you know, the Zillow leads is people we haven't met yet. Right. And we've got to build that rapport where if I can give a, a new agent somebody that's already got the rapport with my team, half the battle won. Well, you know what I love doing is taking the agents on, when I go on a listing appointment, I love taking the agent with me and then they become the buyer's agent for that person. So now they've met them with me, right? I mean, that's, that's a yeah. very warm introduction. They've developed some, some trust. The client I'm speaking of develops some trust in that agent because they're involved in the conversation. They're, they're helping talk about the things that we're talking about. And now they already know them. And for, for me, I, you know, when I look back at, okay, as I started to grow this and, you know, and then we add it, you know, you do all of these different things. And when I just kind of go back to who are our strongest agents now, they're the ones that went like, when we bring up, when we bring a new agent, now not a seasoned agent, not like someone new to our team, but a new agent, you know, I just got my license the other day, agent, strictly buyer's agent, strictly buyer's agent, because I can plug them in right away. I know I can get them to make money a lot quicker. And it's difficult to be a brand new agent and sell real estate. It's really difficult to be a brand new agent and think that you're going to go into a listing appointment and win it. And so right. look at those agents. They spent, you know, two, three, four years buyer's agent only. By the way, they crushed. Right? Like, I think they freaking made more money when they did that. Uh, because when you go from buyer's agent to now doing both, you know, you're trying to figure it all out. Right? And some things slip through the cracks on you. But that's worked really well for us, Jeremy, is bringing those people. I still, we get a listing appointment. Uh, we have Slack as one of our communicators that goes out. I love it. Yeah, listing appointment tomorrow at one. Who can go? Boom. And then somebody's on their way with me. And then I don't have to drive either. That's gone. John, do you, do you, I let my agents list and sell, mm -hmm. uh, just like you, I want to go with them on their first few listings, help them kind of show them how to objection handle and, and go through the processes. Do you let your agents as well list and, you know, work buyers and sellers? Initially we, we, we want to bring them on as buyers agents only a new agent. Now, if mm -hmm. Jimmy John, who's been selling real estate for 10 years joins, then we will train them on the way that we want them to list. And then they're free to go, uh, to go list, you know, to buyers and sellers. But a new agent brand new to the market, even now, I mean, we've, we've, we've sped it up and we've learned how to get them there quicker. But I still right. want to commit to six months or a year of just working buyers only. Because, look, you sit down on our desk today, you're going to get buyer leads. I can't get you right. listed from that, that. You know what I mean? And as a business, yeah. you certainly can't send somebody that isn't, seasoned and knowledgeable into the marketplace and lose the business because now right. we're a or a buyer. So I always feel like, you know, if, if, if Chris is on our team and he's been in the market or an agent one month and he knows someone that wants to, okay, but he doesn't know how to list. And, and we all know that those friends of ours don't always just list with us. Right. right. Or right. some of the worst of this is a buyer because I get these calls all the time. I just bought a house and now I want to sell my house. Did you buy your house through? So and so, why are you calling me? Because they don't know what the hell they're doing, right? Listing is a very different dynamic. Uh, it's a very different dynamic. I think it takes some experience, it takes some knowledge, it takes some know-how to talk through these things. You know, um, it does with a buyer side transaction too. But you're going out, you're showing them product, right? Do you like it? Do you like it? Do you like it? No, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, here's a contract, and we put a deal together. Listing is very different. A lot of a lot of moving, yeah. a lot of things involved. Um, your, your communication has to be very different with them. So I really, look, we say to them, are you committed to being a buyer's agent initially? Yes. Okay, great, because I can make sure you make money, right? Right. And you learn so much through that process. But so going back to my scenario, Chris brings, uh, you know, a guy that he met at an open house wants to sell his home. I go on that listing appointment, I pay him a referral fee, and he gets him on the buy side. Awesome. It secures the listing for the company, which then secures the buyer for him because, you know, if he could be invested in himself and loses the listing, well, then he also lost the buyer. And now everybody's yeah. here going like, well, shit, what do we do now? So that's, that's yeah. how we've done it. It's worked really well. When we've gotten away from it, it's been a pain point. And so I think it's just kind of a proven system that works well. Now, if somebody's a really good agent and they're sharp and I can tell that when I'm appointment with them, we'll speed them up into that. We've, we're doing a uh, something similar. We're kind of doing an agent boot camp 
So the last uh, team agent I brought on, I was up front with her. I said, you know, you're a brand new agent. Uh, I think you'll do well, but you know, there's the training aspect. So here's what we're going to do before you get to join the team, you're going to work with just in within the brokerage. And I'm going to have you grind out your book of business. You're going to bring, you know, leads to the table. I'm going to give you some leads. We're going to make sure you don't starve. Uh, and then I'm going to go with you on these listings and we're going to, you know, I'm going to list them. You're, I'm going to let you be co-agent with me and you're going to work through the process with me and just a lot of hand holding and, and doing it like that. So before I used to let them automatically on the team and it was like reverse, you, you work really good on the team and then you get up, we teach you how to do everything then you can drop over into the brokerage, right? Um, so we reversed that and, and this, it works so well. So she came on, uh, she knew she had a goal to hit to, to be able to make the team. She really wanted to be on the team to get those leads and all that, that service. So we started her off slow with kind of the training wheels and got her going and man, she really ramped up. And just like you said, I seen something there. I'm like, this girl's got it. She's going to do well. So I give her a little more and I go with her a few more times. And then I'm like, she's got it. Okay. You can do this listing appointment. It's, it's cousin Joe. I'm going to let you go on your own. You definitely got your paperwork down. You know what to look for. You're looking for things that could be issues. And, but I'm going to be involved in negotiations at that point. Right. So we just uh, announced uh, last week, we let her, uh, she earned her spot on the team and it was, it was awesome, man. And so I think that's, something we're going to experiment with is, okay, you're going to go to, you know, Ward Realty Services. You're not going to be on Jeremy Ward team yet. Uh, you're going to work your way up. We're going to put you through the test. And once you prove yourself, then we'll give you a spot on the team. And I think that that's a little security for our team agents too, that they yeah. know that the leads that they've been working and, and helping, you know, us put money into to buy these leads are not going to be uh, risk, you know, to a newer agent. So I think just what you said is, is, you know, walking into that, wading into that position of a listing agent and even making it to the team. Uh, for me, I feel to, like that's smart. It goes back to what we said earlier. Like the same way we want to build a strong foundation in our business, they need to do the same, right? I mean, if you just right. start shotgunning everywhere and, and, and went on listing appointments and because you're not capable, you're losing them, then you're losing money, you're losing opportunity. And, and that, I think that goes back to what we talked about earlier. There's 87% failure rate in our business because shit's done wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so now we have a chance to do it right. And, if, and, it, and it goes back again, that trust, if you put that trust in us, the system is there, plug in. You know, Andy, one of the guys on our team, um, he was buyer agent, buyer agent, buyer agent, buyer agent, buyer agent. And I'm like, when you want to start talking about listening, he's like, hell no, I'm making money. I'm doing great. I just want to keep rocking. Um, and I think too often people, oh, I, I got to, you know, because John lists, I have to list. Well, that's great. And that day will come. But I didn't, I mean, we're talking 10 years, right? Yeah, so right. Trust in those systems. I, I always say this, look, if you close 50 deals at the end of the year, it's a shit that they weren't. Right? I mean, whether they're buyer, seller, ping pong, I mean, what does it matter? You've got the ability to service people to feed your family. Well, and start starting as a buyer's agent, you're selling people homes. And as time goes on, all of a sudden, you're going to progress into a listing agent with a relationship with somebody that you already know. And that's going to be your future listing. So, you know, I always tell my buyer's agent, think real seriously about what home you put these people in. Make sure it's a good home. Make sure they're buying at the right price. Let's really take care of these people because someday that's going to be a listing you have to sell yeah. for your people. And so it's, there's a lot that goes into it that I don't know that just somebody off the street thinks about, but you know, we've been here long enough to see the other side of it. So, you know, we can transfer that information into our newer agents. Look, look down the road 10 years, buddy, make sure they're happy at closing. Make sure you did a good job. Put them in the right home. Don't put them in no, just to get an offer, put them in the right home. Make sure they're in good shape. No doubt about it. Brother man, Jeremy Ward, Ward Realty Services, Southern Indiana, uh, rocking a little bit of Louisville, Kentucky also. Um, I thank you so much for being on. I thank you for your friendship. Um, even though we have not spoke in person, like where we can actually bump shoulders in probably two years. Um, right. That's a testament to just, you know, honestly who you are. And I know that, uh, that I can connect with you so easily and so quickly. And I think that makes you a, a great leader. Uh, and you lead from your heart, which I think is ultra important. So I just want to one, congratulate you. Uh, I'm going independent Thank you. On, on embracing your own brand, which does have some power and some momentum uh, and, and just being who you are. I thank you so very much, brother. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, John. You know, Tom Ferry came up to me 
uh, I think we met in Seattle uh, after the Zillow event. You know, we all got to go meet the, the, the CEO and have dinner and have a, you know, just learn a lot of stuff that most agents uh, didn't get opened up to in the, in the regular business. But Tom Ferry come up to me and says, you need to meet John. John is a tremendous leader. Uh, he, he, he sells a lot more homes than you do. And you need to get with John and, and get with this guy. You're all in this, close to being in the same markets in, in Midwest. Yeah. Uh, get to know this guy. And, you know, that was some of the best advice Tom had given me. You know, we sit down and have dinner with you and your lovely wife. We just talk, talked about, you know, we talked about business, but we talked about life. We talked about kids. And yeah. then it just, we just hit it off. It's just like you say, you, you click and, and it's just, it, I get up, I watch your post and then I get inspired by what you're doing. And then, it, you know, it just, it plays good for all of us. It works out good to, to have these type of people like you in our lives. And, and I appreciate you having given me an opportunity to be with you today on your podcast. And uh, man, I'm just excited to see you rock and roll and, and keep taking. Ditto, brother. I, I'm going to have there. to hit you up next time we're in town for the worst races. So stay tuned for that. Um, I got you. Everybody, uh, Make sure you check this guy out. Great guy. Follow him on Facebook. Follow him on Instagram. Um, and obviously check out this podcast. And thank our audience for, for liking, subscribing. You can find us on iTunes, um, SunCloud. Where else, Chris? I don't know. All over the damn place. Thoroughbredpodcast.com. Um, you know, Thoroughbreds for me, uh, uh, just an elite athlete, but it's really uh, about being elite business people. It's not just about money. It's about service and taking care of people. Everyone, God bless you all. God bless you and your family, brother, man. Thank you. Rock it. Peace out, buddy. All right, man. We'll see you.